Okay, so now that we have Firebase connected to our app, what I now want to do is create a login page. So in the app directory over here, we have a layout and page.tsx in here. So by default, the top level is going to be the home page. So all we need to do to create a login page forward slash login or whatever it is, is create a new folder. And whatever you want the route path to be is what you would type in here. So in my case, I'm going to call this the login page. So login like so. And then in login, I'm going to create a new file called page.tsx. And you can also create a root layout for this, which is essentially the layout.tsx. But what I'm going to do is copy the home page and paste it in here like so. And we don't need the users get users function in here. And we don't need that as well. I'm going to rename this to login. And then we don't need to import the rest of the information in. So let's delete that and delete the imports as well. So essentially export default async function of login. And there's no asynchronous code we need in the login page. So we can just do a normal function like so. So all we need now is the main tag with display of legs, the height of the screen. We don't want the overflow of hidden. We want the items to be center and justify center as well also a bg of white and inside here we're going to have a div which essentially has an image and a login button so first of all we want to import the next image tag and press tab again the width and height of the images is going to be 200 and this is going to be the whatsapp logo and this time what i'm going to do is bring in the whatsapp logo source as a url and paste that in and i also might need to update the next config to reflect the new url in the outer div, I now need to give styling in here. This will be a display of flex and a flex direction of call, which is column items of center. And then finally, a gap of 10, which means separate the children inside here. So we have an image and I also want a login button, which I will create a login button component for. Now we can just comment this out. And now if I save all, now I need to start my application again. And then if I navigate to slash login now, I should see the login page being rendered. So slash login. And as I predicted, you can see here, it's got an invalid source prop. So we need to add this URL to next config.js. So let's go ahead and add that in. And in here, if we just paste it in and close it off and save, we now need to restart the server and then refresh the page. And now, as you can see, the login page is working correctly and the image isn't rendering. So we can see what's up with that. So let's go back in the code. So now if we refresh the page, you can now see the WhatsApp logo being rendered in the middle. And just to check that the app router is working correctly, what I'm going to do is type in something random in here and press enter. And now you can see here we get a 404 page, meaning that this page that we typed in doesn't exist. So if we press back, we go back to the login page here. What I now want to do is create a login button. So let's go ahead and create that. So in here, if I just uncomment this out in my components, I'm going to close the sidebar now and create a new folder called login because this is where the login functionality will go. And in here, I'm going to create a new file called login button tsx. And then I'm going to say RAFCE and login button is the component. And instead of a div, I want to return a button. And this button will have a class name of a padding of four, first of all, a border black that is rounded and it's going to be rounded.md, which is, I believe that is six pixels round. And then we want a hover functionality. So hover and the color will change to BG gray of a hundred. And then inside the button, I'm just going to say sign in with Google. Like so. So now if I save, I just need to import this login button in from my components. And now if we check it on our app, you can see here the button is there, although the border isn't working correctly. So let's just double check what I've typed in here. We also need a height for the border outline. So that will be border two. So now we have an outline in here. So when we click on it, I essentially want to sign in with the Google auth provider that we connected earlier. And then we want to then redirect to the home page. So let's go ahead and create that functionality. So on the button, we want an on click 
and the on click is going to return a callback and we want to do handle sign in so let's create that so in here i'm going to do const handle sign in like so in here i want to console.log sign in for now so let's save and see if that is connecting so at the minute there's that error so essentially what we want to do is just call handle signing like so and invoke it in the function so now if we look in the console we have an error in here saying event handlers cannot be passed to client component props meaning that this is a server component so we need to convert it into a client component so use client again and if we save that's why we were getting the white screen if we refresh you can now see here we get in the ui back and then i also want to console log when i click on here so every time i click on you can see the sign in up here here so that is connected the next thing we need to do is create this signing functionality so the way to do that in firebase is first of all i want to sign in with pop-up sign in with pop-up from firebase which takes in an auth and a provider the auth will be the auth coming from our firebase that we created so let's go into the lib folder and then firebase so we have auth here and we also have the provider which is the google provider so we can import this from our lib firebase and then the google provider which is coming from our lib firebase in here and what we also need to do is chain a dot then in here so dot then we get a result and we want to first of all console log that result to see if it's working correctly and we also need to close this off and then I also want to catch the error if there is an error and we can either console log the error or throw a new error. So I'll do that instead. Throw a new error like so of error dot message in here. So now if we save, we now are signing in, we can console log the result. But what we want to do essentially is add the user to the Firestore. So let's check what the result is. So if we go into here in our console, I want to go in console and click sign in with Google. Something is going on, which means it's signing in with the pop-up. So we can see here that the signing functionality is kind of working and is connecting to our Next.js 13 WhatsApp Firebase app. So let's close that down for now. And instead of console logging the result, what I want to do is create a new function called add user to Firestore. And we want to pass in the user in here. So instead of the result this time, I'm going to create a constant called user, which essentially is result.user. And I want to add optional chaining in here to see if there is a result, then add result.user. And then we want to pass in add user to Firestore. And once that is complete, then we want to do router.push, which essentially means direct the user to the homepage. So there's a few things we need to define in here. First of all is we want to define the router on the page. So let's define that now, which is const router is use router from select next slash router like so. And then let's create this function. So what I'm going to do now is in my Firebase, I'm going to create a new file in here. And this is going to be called the user controller.ps. So this will handle all of the user functionality in our application. So all I'm going to do is create a function now. So export const add user to Firestore, which is essentially an async function. And let's close this off. And the user that we are passing in is going to be of type user. And this will be coming from Firebase auth. So that is a user type that we will have. First of all, what we want to do is we want to check if there's a user. So what we will do is instead of adding a document, we will do set doc. And what we will add is a comment. So if user already exists in Firestore, then we just want to update the last online message. So update the last scene to now. And then if it doesn't exist, if user does not exist in Firestore, then add the user to Firestore. So that is the requirements for this function. So first of all, we need to create a reference to the document that we want to create. So if we go into our Firestore application in Firestore database, essentially what I want to do is create a collection called users and then add the user as a doc in there, the sign in user. So if we go in here and create a user ref, so const user ref. So this is the user that we are passing in. 
as an argument is equal to doc. So we want to create a new document from Firestore. So let's import that in. And now we want to get access to the Firestore. So let's create the Firestore hook. So that will be export const Firestore, which is equal to get Firestore from our Firebase app, which is coming from the index here. So I'm just going to call this Firestore app, which will make more sense instead of the app itself. And then if we're going to use a controller, and import Firestore app from the relevant index file. And we also want to get the Firestore. So we need to import the get Firestore hook and also the doc from the relevant Firebase slash Firestore. We don't need the rest of these. And in the doc, what I want to do is pass the first argument of the doc, which is the Firestore that I want to connect to and find the doc in or add the doc in in this case. And then the second argument is the collection that I want to create. And then the third argument is the user that I want to create the doc for, which is the user.uid. So that's unique for every single user when we sign into the application. So that is the user's ref. And then we want to await because this is an asynchronous, asynchronous function. And we want to await set doc, which comes from Firestore as well. So if we import that at the top, if we hover over set doc, it says here expected two to three arguments. So if we go into it, so if you do command click, you can see here it takes in a few arguments. It takes in the reference for the document and then the data. So this is essentially the data we want to pass in. So set doc is there. So it can take two arguments or three. So this is the three arguments in here. So reference the data that we want to pass in. So essentially the user data that we use and then the options that we want to do. And the options we want to do is we could merge the fields like so, which we will do, which is merge of a Boolean value. So that, that will be true in our case because we want to update the last scene always whenever the user logs in. So let's go back into our user controller. First argument is the user ref. So user ref like so and then essentially what i want to do is bring in an object which is the uid is going to be the user dot uid the name is the user dot display name the user dot email and then also the photo is the user dot photo url the final thing is the last online which is the server timestamp and this is imported from firebase also which means that it gets the local server timestamp for wherever that user is, and that will be stored in the database. The last argument, which is the merge argument, which means update every time the user logs in, which is going to be the merge option of true. So now if I save that, that is the function complete. So adding the user to the Firestore, it receives a user object, which is the object type of the user coming from Firebase auth. We then get access to a document, which is access the collection of users and then set a document based on the user.uid, which is a unique identifier for every single user when they sign in using the Google Auth provider. That is the first argument. Then we want to set an object in that document, which consists of the UID name, email, photo, and last online, and then Essentially, we just want to update the server timestamp, which is what the merge true is saying in here. So if I go into login button, all I now need to do is control space and import that in from our user controller file in the Firebase lib. Once we sign in, we then want to route it or push into the home page. If there's an error, then we catch it here. And then essentially, if I save all, all being well, we should add the user to the Firestore using the Google credentials. And then we should also navigate to the home page in here. So let's give it a try now. So in the browser, we don't have anything in our Firestore database at the minute. If I refresh the page, you can see there's an error in here of the, on the login button. So let's go ahead and check what the error is. So the root, so what happened is the use router is being imported from next router, but it should be from next navigation instead. So now if I save, that error should go away, which it has done. And when I click sign in with Google, I'm going to sign in using my Google credentials. So this is my email address. If I click my email address, what is happening now is 
it has signed me in and then finally it has navigated me to the home page so what you could do there and what i will do is implement a loader so we will do that next but essentially if i go into here and go into rules and then back into data i now have a user's collection created which has created a document which was from my user uid so this is identical in here and it has created the object for me of my photo, my name, last online, and also my email address in here. So that is how you would create the user and add it to Firestore also. So just finally, a few changes that I want to make and a few improvements. So what you can do in our app router at the app level is where is page, we could create a loading page, which is what was needed. So in here, I'm just going to create a simple loading page and bring in my code which essentially is a loader. So I'm going to create a common folder for any common components. And the common component I want to create is a loader.psx. And the load I'm going to use is coming from Material UI. So if I just quickly copy and paste this in, essentially it's using the circular progress from Material UI. So therefore we need a use client at the top and then we have some styling to place it in the center and give a background of white on the whole screen and this will never change this is stateless so we can just wrap it in a react memo like so so now all i need to do is import the loader in and now if i save all what will happen is if i go back in to our application and refresh the page as you saw there, there was a little load there happening on the home page. If I do it again, you can see the load is being incorporated now. So now that we are successfully logged in, I'm just going to close down the loader component and the app component as well. The login button is now complete. What I'm going to do is create a helper file. So helper.ts in the same folder. And instead of having this function in here, what I'm going to do is add it into the helper like so. And I'm going to export this. And what we need to do is just import all of the functionality again. And what I'm going to do is pass in the router as an argument and keep it as of type any for now because this router has a type. So let's go ahead into our login button. And this time I'm going to invoke the function here. Handle sign in and we want to pass in the router like so. And we also need to import it from helper in here. And to get the type for router, all we do is hover over router. And we just need to import app router instance. And I'm just going to delete these unnecessary imports in here. I'm going to handle sign in. And this handle sign in is going to be of app router instance type, which comes from the next folder. So that is all that functionality working. The result is of user credential. So we will let TypeScript infer that type. So we don't need to do anything with it. And that is the login button working correctly. So now if I save all, we now have the login functionality working on our next app. So next up, what we want to do is we want to pull in the data from our user in here and update the sidebar header next.